Come with questions the next time that you're here and go through all these things, especially citation. If you are stuck, don't wait. Ask one of the good students to give you the piece of code. Get the piece of code and cite it. Okay? If there are pieces of, pieces of project you can't do, that's very normal. You don't have to get 100% in the project. You can get it still 85 and pass with A. Okay? So. Yes. Initialize it. In the initialization area. You have to see me on, on Teams. Show me your code. Put it on GitHub. Show me the code. And we'll go through it. I'll explain it to you. And it's going to be, and then you're going to explain to all the other students. So everybody will, is, is going to take benefit. <clears throat> so when we, uh, we talk, we talk about, uh, we talk about uh, three pillars of object orientation. We talked about three pillars, three main basics of object orientation. Those three basics, three basic rules of object orientation, they are, can anybody tell me please? What are they? Pardon me? Inheritance is one of them, that's right. Polymorphism and encapsulation. So we did polymorphism, life was beautiful. And what was the an example for polymorphism when we did it? Remember? No, no, that, that, the example of in C++. No, that, that's good. Thank you. Uh, I know. Bicycle and motorcycle, that was inheritance, by the way. It wasn't polymorphism. But, but <laughs> yeah. It, but um, I was asking, like, in C++, when you write a code, what, which part of the code is the one that says uh, uh, polymorphism? Like, you, you, what part of code you have written did polymorphism for you? Functions. Functioning what? Overloading functions, right? So function overload was what we did. And I mentioned that this function overload is really actually fake. It's not really object orientation. It's, it's not really, it's not really uh, uh, polymorphism. It is... Uh, uh, the compiler behind the scene attaches the types to the name, so the name is actually different. They are not the same. So when you have add int int and add double double, in your view, you have an add function that receives two arguments, but in compiler's view, you have a function that is called add int int, and the other one is add double double. <laughs> so there are two different functions. But anyways, that was the polymorphism example, but we're going to go through <clears throat> real ones soon. The other thing of polymorphism is casting, like you write a double and you assign that double to an integer. The integer magically gets converted to double and goes to double, right? Or you have an integer, you set it to a double. It automatically drops the, the, the partial parts and keeps the, the integer part in the integer. How does that happen? That's, this is called coercion. This is another type of fake polymorphism, which means uh, it does the, it, it, it's different types of assignments. So you are doing assignments, and automatically the proper assignment is chosen for you. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing that we want to talk about is inheritance. What inheritance is uh, is to uh, lit it's it's a, a fancy way of reusing code. The non-fancy way of reusing code is what? non-fancy way of reusing code is to write functions and recall the functions instead of writing the content of the function over and over, right? We write a function, we reuse the function instead of writing the code over and over. <clears throat> In object orientation, the story is like this. You design a class, you, you reuse your class over and over. And therefore, your class is being reused and you don't have to recreate new classes. Bicycle that you were talking about. Okay? First of all, what do we have? What, what is a bicycle? A bicycle is a, it's a vehicle, right? So I have a vehicle, right? And this class vehicle has its own specification. It has things like, for example, it has what? Integer speed. Right? Something like that. 
right? And I'm not going to go deeply into it. Then you're going to say, okay, I want to create a bicycle out of this thing. Okay? So bicycle is essentially a vehicle that has pedals or, <laughs> right? Or it has two wheels or something, all right? Something like that. So essentially, if you want to say is a relationship, which means inheritance, okay? <clears throat> Your first name? David is a human being. David has glasses. That's has a relationship. David is not glasses. David is a human being. Okay? So he is in here. Like if I say, if I told you, close your eyes, human, you can picture something, right? It's not a definite thing, human. When I say human, you don't know really what I'm talking about. Is it a woman? Is it a man? Like what type of a human you don't know? Is it uh, oriental? Is it another type of oriental? <laughs> is, it, is it these? Like uh, what, what type of a thing we don't know, right? So uh, all the different types of things comes, comes to mind. But as soon as we say David, now we are definite. Now we can actually say he is a human. So uh, Mr. David is an object of type male human. So, so we do it that way. Are we okay with this thing? But again, David has glasses. It's not. It's the same thing over here. So I'm not going to go that deep into bicycle. I'm going to go in to. I'm not in, in vehicle. I'm going to create the bicycle thingy. So I'm going to say bicycle is what I have, and then I have a class engine. So this class engine of mine has something like power, okay? Whatever. Now I want to, now I want to create, now I want to create a motorcycle. Motorcycle is a bicycle that has an engine, correct? Are we good? So if I want to, I so and and if I have something like this over here, I can actually say over here, uh, engine uh, double power. Let's put over here M power so we know what we are talking about. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> All right. I look at the semicolon at the other one. If somebody looks at me and says, he's never written a single C++ program in his life. Anyway, so that now I want to create a motorcycle that is a bicycle and has an engine. Is a goes up right when I write the class. So in here, I'm going to say class motorcycle that is a bicycle but has an engine. Got it? And my motorcycle may have <coughs> something like, so what else? So it has an engine and <clears throat> let's give it something else. Like, that's good enough. Forget about it. I'm going to talk about the rest. I just, I'm, in those details, we're going, to, we're going to bring some. I just want to show you the syntax. Okay? And <clears throat> this engine of mine, and all these things can be initialized in the initialization area. So when I create a motorcycle, so motorcycle has an engine, and let's, uh, a mo uh, has speed, this one has an engine. So I can do this. I can say motorcycle, okay, receives, it's created using an engine, some kind of an engine that I install on it. Let's say const engine reference E, and it receives, uh, um, and or let's put power. So in here, I'm going to say double power. It has certain power, and it has certain speed. OK? So now, if I want to create this motorcycle, how do I initialize parts of it? Parts of motorcycle are two different ways. First what it is, which means a bicycle, part of it, what it has, 
is the engine. All these can be initialized in the initialization area, which means in here, I should say, okay, I want to create a bice, I want uh, uh, it to uh, initialize the bicycle part of it. So I'm going to put it over here, bicycle, and I'm going to pass the speed to it. And also an engine that has certain power. So it doesn't matter if it has something or is, is something. Everything that it is and has can be initialized in the initialization area right over there. Are we okay with this? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the syntax of inheritance in C++. And we're going to go through it through its details in a second. All right? Uh oh. 19%. Do two days and one hour remaining. Uh, it's going to probably get off in a, in a second or two, but it doesn't matter. As soon as it goes off, then we're going to go for a break. I'm going to go check to see if I actually left the adapter because I can't believe I did not bring. See, my brain doesn't work anymore. Anyways, so now that we know this, let's talk about animal kingdom. Animal. In my um, abstraction of an animal, like what I think about when I look at an animal, an animal is something that has a name, that I can set the name to something. An animal acts, moves, makes a sound. Okay? Simple as that. The constructor stuff I've written over there, you can uncomment it to see how things are getting created just for walking through it. Are we okay with this thing? So this is what I'm doing. I have an animal, and this animal of mine uh, have this. It has its this capabilities. Um, I can set it and get it and do whatever I want to do. Uh, in the CPP file of animal over here, obviously I am setting everything in an animal. I'm, I, I have a constructor that sets the animal and says that I am creating an animal. And I have a flag called debug over there, and I set it to false by default. That debug class uh, 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 variable of mine, what is the scope? The scope of that? It's file scope, right? It is not global, it is file scope. When you, in C language, wrote a function and you wanted to use that function everywhere in your application, what did you do? You added a prototype for it, right? And put it in a header file, correct? We can do the same thing to variables. So if you have a variable that has file scope and you want it to be visible to everyone everywhere, what you can do is to go to your prototype, to your header file, and you put extern, and you rewrite the name of the app, uh, variable. This becomes the prototype for that variable and tells to all files, there is a Boolean variable created in some other file that you can access it. Its name is debug. Got it? So this line makes the debug file variable global. So the global that you always heard was never global. It was file scope. When you make it extern, it really becomes global. C in and C out are extern objects of type IO stream. That is that they are externalized in IO stream header file. That's why you can use them everywhere. OK, so that's my debug. And if you, and it, uh, <clears throat> and it uh, does the debugging and everything. And also, and I think it's going to just go out of juice right now, but uh, 
I created the utils file over here. So utils header file of mine, it has lots of good stuff in there that you can see. I have lots of variable, lots of functions that you can use, foolproof data, entry, reading, uh, lots of good stuff are there. And you are allowed to use this in your project or whatever you want, no problem. So what did I do? I put all this inside a class called utils, correct? And this utils of mine, I want to use it everywhere. Because I want to use it everywhere, I have to instantiate it, correct? Otherwise, I cannot use it. Utils class of mine, it's not a class, it's a, it's a utility box. It's like one of those toolboxes that you carry around with you. So I create one out of it, call it, call it UT, right? And I'm gonna externalize this exactly like the other one. So I'm gonna say over here in my utils.h, extern utils UT. So what happens now is that anywhere I want to do string copy, I include utils.h and I'm gonna say ut.screencopy, ut.strcat, ut.read. So that ut is available everywhere, okay? So therefore, if I want to have a, an attribute for utils for specific reasons, I can, and it's gonna be a unique object that's gonna be available everywhere, exactly like C out. So, Exactly, exactly. And later on, I'll teach you how to make that utils unique so no one can create it. It's only you that can have it, okay? And yes. The same, it's not different. Oh, creating a variable in header file? Without extern? Then if you include your header file twice, you're gonna get an error because you're gonna have two variables. Even if you have the... No, sometimes you have, then, then it's not the same variable anymore. If you include the header file in two different files, let's say I have the debug variable, Boolean variable, and I don't make it external, I put it in a header file. I include header file in a.cpp and b.cpp. What what's gonna happen is this, a.cpp is gonna have a variable called debug, B.cpp is going to have a variable called debug that has nothing to do with the other one. It's not global. There are two debug variables in two different files. Very bad thing to do. Okay? Are we good? All right. So the animal of mine works like this. It's very simple and straightforward. I can uh, create a variable, uh, an animal, I call it Buffy. And I'm gonna say animal B over here, B is equal to A. These are activated if you uncomment that one and see what the functionalities are. Do it. And the next day you are coming in, uh, on Monday we're gonna go through this too and I'm gonna uh, make it complete. But we are not behind that, don't worry about it. Although this thing is gonna finish now, but anyways. So <clears throat> if I run the program, it's obvious what it's gonna do. It's gonna say act like an animal, walk like an animal, and so on and so forth. And Running, all right. This is what I gotta say, okay? Creating Buffy the animal, creating nameless the animal, the other one was with uh, default constructor. Now I'm gonna say act like animal, move like animal, sound like animal, showing Buffy, end of main, Buffy dies, and the other one is Buffy too because I assigned it to it, or whatever. Okay. So you can see what happens. Are we okay with this thing? All right. I love pets. So I want to get a cat. Cat is an animal, right? What is the difference between a cat and an animal? Can anybody tell me what a cat has that an animal does not? What a cat has an animal does not have? No? A cat has a, has something. I didn't say is a. A cat is an animal that has number of lives. <laughs> right? Right? An animal dies once. A cat can be killed nine times, right? All right. So if that's the case, if I want to create a cat out of my animal, the syntax is the same. This is my animal, more clear one, okay? And the cat out of animal is 
simply cat is an animal that has number of lives. Do I need to add name to this? No. The name comes from animal. Animal already has the name. It has, through this, we're going to learn one more thing. Any of you whose father had a car and borrowed it? Any of you did it? No? No one? You did? Beautiful. Okay. Right? So, but probably your friend didn't borrow your father's. It would never happen. Right? Why? Because that car was protected for the family. It wasn't public. But your dad might have a Porsche 911 1966. Probably it wouldn't allow you to drive that because that classic thing, you know, he touches it. That's a private one. Even the children are not allowed to touch it. In inheritance, we have the exact same thing. You have private things, you have protected things. Look at the animal. The animal has a name that is private. Nobody's allowed to touch it, even the children. But there are protected accessors for that, that through those you can access it. Protected ones are accessible to children, but not everyone else, which means a th a something out there cannot change the name of the animal, but a cat can. So, so whatever is in protected area of an animal is accessible to the children of animal, to derive class of animal, which is a cat. So these two methods becomes protected for the cat too. Are we okay? So if I do a lion after cat, that lion has access to name too. Okay? Lion is a cat that is an animal, right? I should have said feline, but hey. Anyway, so, but, but we're, we're, we're good with this, right? So now if I look at the cat, but as you see, I commented the move, which means these uh, methods, cat and sound, uh, act and sound, are exactly like what the, uh, exactly what an animal has. So if you actually look at these two, you will see act, void, act, void, act, void, sound, void, sound. So <coughs> if a child, if a derived class carries an identical method as its parents, we call it, it overrides that action. It overrides that method, not overload, override. Which means if you create a object of type cat and say act, the action of cat will be called, not the animals. But if you create an object of type cat and say move, because move for cat was not created, the move of animal will be called. Obviously, cat can have some stuff that animal doesn't have even. Which means if you say cat play, it plays. But if you say animal play, it doesn't even make sense. Animal doesn't even have. Uh, right? Are we okay with this? So that's what it is. That if I run this program, we will see that actually Mr. Cat of ours takes over and overrides the actions of the animal that we designed to do so. So if I run this beautiful program of mine, three years later, when it runs, you will see that actually you're going to create Fluffy the animal as a cat with five lives. It's been killed four times. Okay? So, <clears throat> and move like an animal, sound like animal but says meow. So as you see, moving is not changed, but act playfully, Fluffy the cat, so that's actually changed. But move remains the same, sound change, and Fluffy is playing, and at the end, always in reverse order. So first Fluffy part dies, first the cat part dies, then the animal. First the destructor of cat, and then the destructor of the animal, and it's out. Are we okay with this? This is when life is beautiful and everything's orderly, you do the inheritance. But sometimes, people call other people with their last name. For some reason, people call me Mr. Suleiman, right? You know what's going to happen if you call me Mr. Suleiman, Lou? And if you say, Mr. Suleiman, are you teaching today? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to teach you, no, I'm going to teach you mechanics. 
because my father was a teacher too. He taught mechanics. If you refer to a class, if you refer to a class with its parent's name, it forgets that it's a child. It will not simply do anything that a child is supposed to do. So if I actually, and in any way, so how do you, in object orientation, how do you call a child as a, as a parent, a derived class? When you have a derived class, and you keep that derived class's address in the pointer of a parent, you are calling it with its family name. So if I have an animal pointer holding address of a cat, and I use the animal pointer to call the actions, the actions of the parent will be called, not the child. If I have a reference of a cat, a reference of, a, of an animal, and do the same, it, it has, so take a look at this. This is the exact same thing, but my main is different now. Take a look. In my main, I have a cat called Pepper. Then I have an animal pointer and dynamically put a cat in it. So that cat doesn't even have a cat. Doesn't even has a cat. Oh, doesn't even have a cat reference. And because of that fact, I have to save this because it's going to shut down in a second. When I run it, you see that some strange stuff happens. Remember, AP is a cat, right? But it's with an animal pointer. When I run it, if it doesn't crash and stop on me at the moment, doesn't shut down the computer, you will see that removing Tom the animal, the cat did not die. If you have a child's object pointed by parents pointer dynamically and you delete the animal you will have memory leak because it only sees the animal part it doesn't even know there is a cat and if you call the actions of the cat using the animal reference it will not act like a cat at all that's a problem we need to fix. So I'm going to save this. We're going to have a break. I'm going to go to the other class to see if I actually left my thing over there or not. Let me pause the, stop the recording as part one.